Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Jets Radio. This is one of your hosts, Tyson Roush. Jets Dolphins preview. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than this. I mean, how can you not be excited about two of the worst teams in the NFL playing on the same Sunday? I mean, this is just scintillating stuff here. I mean, this I cannot wait to talk about this game. So let me introduce the man, the people, Long Beach Joe. What's up, man? Man, what, what's going on, Ty? Yeah, we about to be out there fighting. This This might be a sloppy, ugly game, but, you know, we're definitely going to talk about it. Can't wait to hear from the people as well. So listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote our Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search Let's Talk Jets Radio. Like that page, our content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message us. We'll message you right back. We love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave us some feedback. We love hearing about what you folks think we do here on Let's Talk Jets Radio. So without further ado, Ty, let's go ahead and get into the show, man. Uh, I'm fired up. Yeah, I'm not fired up at all. I can honestly give a rat's ass about this game. This team has sucked the absolute life out of me. And it's like day by day, something else goes wrong. The, this team, like, I want to know what in the living hell Adam Gase does in practice because to have 26 guys on the injury report is ridiculous. And it seems like they have more injuries from practice than they do in the game. So, I mean, this is just ridiculous. I mean, if he's not killing them on the field, he's killing them off the field. I don't know what the hell he's doing, but it's a nightmare. So uh, we're on Instagram and Twitter at Talk Jets Radio. We're on YouTube, Let's Talk Jets Radio. We've been recently added to like a gazillion places, um, Google Google Podcast, and we're on iTunes, Spreaker, and Podbean, and all kinds of really cool places. So if you see us there, please subscribe and leave us some feedback. We do our best to always interact. Um, and I guess, Joe, like I said, this game is, I mean, this, this game is, I can't even get into this at all, but. If you look at the injury report and you start there first with the Jets, I mean, it's a nightmare. Oh, this is a complete yeah. nightmare. And you look at it and it's like, first off, you look at just the middle linebacker position. Neville Hewitt's doubtful and Blake Cashman's out. So you add in Avery oh. Williamson and C.J. Mosley out. Dude, they don't have any middle linebackers. I mean, that's it. I mean, you're playing <laughs> Burgess again. You got Brandon Copeland. I mean, the middle linebacker position is a mess. I don't understand what, what Joe Douglas is doing by handling it. This has been the same weird all same way all year long, but just starting there, Joe. I mean, that it's just like, dude, that's the middle, the, the middle of your defense minus Leonard Williams, who's been traded away. I mean, it's it's not yeah. ideal, man. Yeah, it, it is absolutely a complete mess. Um, I don't even know <laughs> what's going on. Maybe we'll see Copeland uh, back at, at, at middle linebacker like we saw in those last couple of games. Uh, I know Burgess is, is out there. Like you said, there, you almost you don't have anybody. Like and and this nope. is going to affect us in this game. It could definitely affect us, uh, you know, with guys coming out of backfield, running backs that they have. I mean, the Dolphins aren't a great football team. We all know that. They're pretty much trying to lose the rest of this year, but they still got guys out there that are fighting and, and running. So this could this could be an issue. This could really be an issue going forward with us, and it just sucks. I don't know how all these guys keep going down and how these guys keep ending up with injuries, but it's happening, and it's this is bad, man. Yeah, so you look at the middle linebacker position, it's completely decimated to a point where you're at your fifth and stri- fifth and sixth string middle linebackers, which is horrendous. Um, other injuries, you know, Josh Bellamy is out, which you're like, ah, who gives, who cares? But that's special teams, especially when you combine yeah. the fact that Rontez Miles is out. So two of your bigger yep. your two of your bigger special teams guys are both out. I mean, that's it's again not ideal, Joe. I mean, I guess a bad team is not ideal. Yeah, I mean, that it is. Just like you said, I know there was a lot of people going, oh, who cares that Bellamy's out? Well, I mean, he is a special teamer. That's one of the reasons why the guy was brought here. And even Rontez as well is a guy that really puts in work on the special teams. So when you're coming up against a team, especially like you said, the Dolphins are not a good football team whatsoever. But, dude, if they make some special teams plays in this game, this could really help them push and get themselves a win. They're, they're, they've got a scrap on every single phase. So when you got two of your better special, better special teamers out, that that does not bode well for you either. I mean, this is this is like I said, I'm gonna keep saying it probably throughout the show. This is not looking good at all. Yeah, and then you look at Rontez Miles even as a safety. So you're like, all right, you know, if the Dolphins have any kind of brains, which is questionable, 
they're going to pass the ball like crazy on the Jets, especially when you look at the injuries. Yep. And now one of your safeties is out. And you look at who's back there without without him. It's like what Farley, I guess. I mean, they're they're kind yeah. of thin in safety as well. So it's not that's. I mean, you so you add in you know Rontez Miles out as a safety, and then Tremaine Johnson who's out, which everybody's probably happy about. You have Nate Harrison there, but the Jets <laughs> secondary is. I mean, the Jets secondary against the Dolphins team There's is probably going to try to pass the ball a lot, and that's probably their yep. only option at this point. I mean, it's they have yeah. some favorable matchups there. Yeah, they, I mean, they you know they got some guys over there. Of course, we know Ryan Fitzpatrick's throwing the ball around, and I'll, I'll you know I laugh, but I remember. We went up to Tampa Bay mm-hmm. one year, and he lit us up. <laughs> coming off of, were we coming out of a bye, Tyson? I think it was. Mm-hmm. It was something. Sure were. But I know that we, <laughs> we, came, we came off of a bye and went on the road to Tampa, and he showed us what the real deal was. I mean, I didn't have a watch on, but I knew what time it was. He absolutely threw the ball all over the place, and so – you know, he's a guy that, like you say, he's magic, you know, at times. There's just times that he can just get hot and boom, it, it's it's right there, and he's just giving it to you all day. And, you know, they got guys over there that can catch the football, Devontae Parker, who, you know, has kind of been up and down throughout his career. But Albert Wilson is a guy that can move, Jakeem Grant. Hell, they even got Alan Hearns over there, too. These are guys that, you know, can do some things in the league. So, like you said, with our, with our secondary looking banged up, uh, they got, they're probably going to be throwing the ball around. They also got Kalen Balaj as well, a guy that can come out the backfield, catch the football too as a running back, and he's a decent runner. So they got some guys over there. Walton, they, they got some guys over there that can make some plays. They're not great, but, you know, with the injuries that we have and, you know, they're coming in, they want to fight. They want to at least win, you know, try to win at least one game, at least the players out there fighting and looking like they want to win. So, you know, we got we to gotta do whatever we can to shut all that stuff down. Yeah, and then you look at the offensive side of the ball, and you have Ryan Khalil, who's out, which could be a positive. Yep. He should have been out three weeks ago. But the biggest question mark <laughs> is Kelvin Beecham, and Kelvin Beecham is not yep. questionable. And I think if you want to have any level of confidence in this game, Kelvin Beecham has to play. I mean, and the thing is, we're going to yeah. keep telling everybody how bad the Dolphins are. The Dolphins do suck, and they are trying to lose. But if your left tackle mm-hmm. does not know what the hell he's doing and everything else, I mean, at some point they're going to take advantage of it. So, to me, I'd feel yep. a lot more comfortable to not embarrass ourselves if Kelvin Beachin plays, and right now he's questionable. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of right there with you. I just don't want to see Chuma over there at left tackle again. It's just no. not a natural Terrible. fit for him right now. Um, uh, I, I would like to see Chuma back on the right side and you know, doing the best he can over there. But like you said, if you have a left tackle that doesn't understand what he's doing, if we don't protect Sam in this game, it, this is going to be a game that can be that can be easily won by the Dolphins. If we don't figure out how to protect Sam, if we don't figure out how to stop guys from being in his face, banging him around, hitting him like we've seen these last couple of games, the Dolphins will have more of a chance to win this football game. I like it's, We're going to talk about it all throughout the show. The Dolphins are not a good football team. It's a team that we should kill. But if we're not taking care of business and we fall asleep at the wheel at times, we've seen it's any given Sunday. Okay, you can be a very bad team and beat a very good team if you're out there fighting, competing, and schematically you're doing things better than them at that time. So we we we, we got to correct this situation. I'm hoping that Beecham plays. I mean, hell, Beecham is not that damn good anyway either, but uh, he's, he's better than Chuma at this point. Uh, so this is we're standing on real shaky ground, man. Yeah, and another disappointing injury, which seems to be a, a litany at this point, is Chris Herndon. And it's like, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. Like, you're like <laughs> so many of these young players you want to see. But seriously, though, it's like you want man. this in a lost year like this, when a year when nothing is going right, you want to see all these young guys get extensive playing time. Blake Cashman's out for yeah. the year now. That blows. Chris Herndon can't get on the field. I mean, it's just like, dude, it's like, it's like never-ending problems with this team. It's like there's... It's just there's no no positives that are coming out of anywhere. Yeah, I, you know, and again, this was the year we were coming into. We were trying to figure out what Herndon was and what he wasn't. You know, we wanted to see the, him take the next step. We thought he was a, a big-time weapon, and he's just missing week after week after week uh, with this injury. So it's, it's kind of becoming a lost year for him almost. You know, he's got to get on the field soon, man, so we can figure out what's going on with this kid. But this just sucks. Yeah, the Jet the Jets injury report is a complete nightmare. And I, like I said, I, I don't know what yeah. the hell Adam Gates is doing on or off the field, but this is a mess. And then you factor in two more, you factor in three more things when you look at this game. And 
the, fa- the first thing is there is a revenge factor. Yes, the Dolphins are tanking. Yes, they don't want to win or anything else. They do want to be Adam Gase. That's a fact. A lot of those guys oh, yeah. like him. Oh, yeah. They, they, would like oh, no- yeah. they would like nothing more to put one of the final nails in his coffin. Like, if they know that they, oh, yeah. that they beat them, they could put pressure on Gase to lose his job, I'm sure that locker room would be more than motivated to beat him. You know, Brian, Fat- yep. Brian Fitzpatrick, the way the Jets let him go, will always want to beat them. And the other thing, Whew. too, is just at some, point, at some point as a team, you want to win a freaking football game. And you look at this, you look, yeah. they look at the Jets and say, you know what, this team's very beatable. They have hope there, too. So there's basically three yeah. good reasons why if the Jets sleepwalk or quit or mail it in or do whatever else, then they're going to have a very good chance to win this game. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the triple whammy right there. <laughs> yep. I mean, you got Ryan Fitzpatrick that's coming back. Like I, and I, I spoke about this a little bit earlier. He, dude, he, he wants to light us up every single time. You know, I still remember him sitting on that podium talking about how the franchise had lost faith in him and how when people lose faith in you, you just kind of keep fighting, you know. And then we got rid of him. Uh, thank goodness we did because he was playing awful that season. But, of course, he wants to kill us. And then, like you said, that, that entire franchise wants to stone Adam Gaze. Not just the players. Everybody wanted him up out of there. He did, you know, even the owner, uh, Stephen Ross, wanted him gone. So, listen, they want to absolutely destroy him at any cost. And this team is going to come in motivated, ready to fight. And I said, look, they're not a good football team at all. But motivation and being ready and being upset and having that revenge factor, that's, that can be deadly, man. We've seen a lot of teams, you know, make, make, the, make a run, turn it around right there and get themselves a W on the board just using that alone, firing themselves up for that whatever game that they're getting ready to get fired up for. So it, this, could, this could be bad if we fall asleep at the wheel, if we do not, you know, keep our foot on their necks, if we somehow just kind of sleepwalk or don't come out ready, if we come out unprepared, if we come out lifeless like we have in these last couple of other games, I can see the Dolphins getting up early and, tr- and finding a way to take a W. Yeah, and I'm really curious to see how this team reacts. I mean, I, I, I'm really down on the entire team, including J- Jamal Adams. I'm down on everybody. And it's just like – They've lost two games. The Patriot game was a complete disaster, and last week was no better. I mean, last week was a, was a joke. So now it's like they, have, they know they have nothing to play for. The fans have given up on them. The media has given up on them. They know they're just playing for each other now. And now it's like, Joe, at some point, it just, that, that kicks in where you're like, you know what, I'm not going to give you 100%. I'm going to give you 80% and look towards next year or look towards you know, Christmas. Oh. And you know what I mean? Like, at, at some point, players start mailing it in. And it, you wonder when that is. Yeah. This could be the kind of game they do it where they know they're playing a bad team. Like, it's just, you, like, I'm curious to see if they come out, like, passionate, fired up with some kind of pride and, like, being a resilient team. Mm-hmm. Or if they're just sitting here, like, just, yeah. just collecting their check. Like, you know what? Let's get this 60 minutes over with so we can go on to the next game. And, and nobody cares. And it, it's going to be fascinating, man. Like, I, I don't really know what to expect. I don't expect much. I honestly don't even care about this game. But it, it's, it would be an indictment on Adam Gase either way. <laughs> Yeah, damn! <laughs> you, just, you don't even care about the game. What the hell do they care about it? Dude? You look at this team; it's a train wreck. It's a freaking train wreck. There is nothing hey, positive man. about this team. Like the, the few positives we had with, with, with Sam Darnold and Jamal Adams aren't even positives anymore. It's like this is a joke. Like I, every day, like you log on the social media, like what happened today? What nonsense happened today? How are we going to become more yeah. miserable? Let's make ourselves even more miserable and embarrass ourselves more. And you look at this yeah. team, and like, dude, this yeah. is like, it's like, it's almost, it's funny, like, you could almost call this like a trap game, because they, they suck, and they're probably like, you know what, we could beat this team, and we're better than them. Like, kind of being like, oh, you yeah. know what, they suck, and we'll lose. Like, you can almost see that happening. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, look, I, I hear what you're Bunch saying, and I understand, I understand, you know, the fan base is down, especially on Adam, people have completely turned around on him, which I, you know, I, I, I can understand, you know, just with the situation with the team right now, and you know, how people feel. Uh, but, look, this is a game where we have to come out ready. Um, if you're coming out lifeless like we have in the past, that is a direct indictment on Adam Gears. If this team comes out and looks unprepared yet again in another week, um, then that, that's on Gaze. He's the guy that has these guys prepared and ready and have them ready to go. And if you've got players out there that are thinking like you just talked about, hey, I'm just coming here, collect my check, I'm going to quit, then those are the guys you need to get rid of right now. Because, uh, you know, we've, we've kind of already talked about it. We might be going into another rebuild again right after the season. So if you've got guys that are quitting right now, then they're going to quit all throughout this, 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 
I don't even know what to call it anymore. Uh, a re rebuild? <laughs> I don't even know what to call Take it. Play. You, you, <laughs> you got you got guys that's ready to quit through whatever we're about to go through for the next, you know, two to three, maybe four years, then you might as well get rid of those guys right now. So those guys are still playing, you know, for their careers here at least. Um if you got a guy that gives up and you see the state where he's quitting, then he needs to go immediately after the season. So it is what it is. We've got to come out. We've got to fight hard, man. I do not want to see us lose to the Dolphins. I really don't. I hate the Dolphins. Everyone knows that. Um, can't stand them. I can't stand anything that goes on. I can't stand the stadium, the fans, the, the mascot. If you, you know, sell popcorn over there, I don't like you either. So we've got to come out, fight hard, and get ourselves a W against this team. You know, and it's funny, like, I hate losing. I mean, this season, is, like I said, it sucked the life out of me. Like, I'm completely miserable. Like, I hate football right now. And it's like a part of me, just a weird part of me, wants to see us lose this game to put more pressure on Adam Gates to get fired. Like, I'm to that point now where like, I want, like, I back-to-back losses, like, this week and next <laughs> week to get him fired. Like, I do. Like, I'm to that point. Honestly, we've don't seen think it. Like, happen. We've already seen this is this – is, Step by step, exactly what we mm-hmm. thought was going to happen when this guy came here to the off the field yeah. stuff, the locker room stuff, the problems. He's not doing anything, and it's like if it, whatever happens to like, and I hate like I hate being like this, like like oh you're not a real fan, blah 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 blah. But it's like, dude, you know if they lose the next two games, this is a good job. This this hot seat, there'll be banners and planes and boycotts and petitions and everything else. Yeah, but and I like, maybe we'll get him out of here mm-hmm. faster. Because like, dude, this is yeah. bad, dude. Like, th- there's so many problems on this team right now. I mean, it's everywhere. <laughs> look, look, I, listen, I, and I hear you, Tyson. Look, I, I still, I don't want to see us lose to the Dolphins. No way, no how. There's would you no feel, part would of you feel good us. if they beat the Dolphins? I, do you take any pride in that? Like, they, they beat an uh, uh, 0 and 16 or whatever the hell they are, 0 and 7. Yeah. Did that make you feel good? Like yeah. you walk around, like, yeah, man. We just, we just beat a defeated <laughs> team. We just beat one of look. yeah. Go, go, Jets, man. Woo-hoo. <laughs> we just beat them. Why don't listen. we great? Who cares, listen, man? man. Like, this I, is it. Like, are you listen, excited, man, Joe? If I, Jets win 31-10 listen, on Tuesday night, are you yeah. excited about it? Like, you'd probably be a Jets fan. you beat the, the lifeless, listen, man. lowless Dolphins. Listen, man, any, 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 any way we can get a W, I'm happy, okay? I'll take a W over L any day of the week. I'll mail you I don't one. care how it comes. <laughs> I don't care how it comes, you know. I don't care if we beat them, you know, 17-16. I don't care if we beat them, you know, 7-10. to 10. I, I don't care if it's an ugly win or a, a beautiful win or something where we barely win or we get lucky and, or, you know, we just happen to fall on a football and roll into the end zone and score a touchdown. That's the last play of the game. We get a w. Whatever we got to do to get a W, I'm happy about. Uh, so I, I'll take it however, however, whatever way it comes. But I'll tell you what. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't. I just don't know. Even if we lose this game, I don't know if they'll fire Adam Gaines. I just. I just don't. There's so many built-in excuses. There's still fans making excuses for him. I see it all day on social media. I've been contacted by people that, have, that I've gone back and forth. Well, with people let's, to be, that to be said, fair, you know, people, we still should. Well, we could be fair, dude. The people that were yeah. that were lecturing us on how good Adam Gaines was supposed to be, they've all been the hiding game. It's it's very convenient. Oh, yeah. It's very convenient because yeah. a lot of them were also Ryan Fitzpatrick fans too. They were all telling us how great <laughs> Patrick was, blah, blah. and then once yeah. it went to hell, which we said it was going to, they vanished. So yeah. all those yeah. Adam yeah. Gay supporters that lectured me and blasted me for about two weeks, tell me how great he was, how much I'm a jerk off, they're all gone. You can't yeah. find them nowhere. I didn't say that. I didn't say they're that. Still, Tweets are gone. They go completely behind. You can't Tyson, find them nowhere. I said there, there are still some around, and I've you know I've gone back and forth <laughs> with a couple, but I tell you what, there's, there's I'm telling you, there, there's still some around, uh, but. I just I don't know if this gets him fired because there's so many excuses that he has, so many built-in excuses, especially when you look at what they're about to do to the roster. You know, for all all intents and purposes, it looks like, again, that we're going to go into a full rebuild. There were already guys talked about being traded during the trade deadline. We all know Adams, uh, Le'Veon Bell, Robbie. Of course, Robbie is probably going to be gone in the offseason, but Le'Veon Bell is probably going to be looked to be dealt again in the offseason, and Jamal Adams, this situation – He's probably going to be gone in the offseason, too. So once you get rid of those two guys, especially if you're getting rid of Le'Veon Bell, who is, like, the biggest offensive weapon that we have, uh, you're talking about rebuilding this team. That's what you're talking about. So, again, he might be the guy that's going to be in charge of rebuilding. He can use that. He can use uh, Mike McCagney. Didn't like him. That's why we fired him. Chris Johnson had any brains. 
which we know. He, but no, but see, if, if Chris, Chris Johnson, Johnson had any, had any brains, brain, which, which Tyson, he, if Chris does, Johnson had any, if, if Chris <laughs> Johnson had any brains, he wouldn't have hired Adam Gaze. So just no, I agree, but no, but no, I just want to. I'm just going to pile on tonight because I'm the one I'm going to pile on. I I don't care. I don't care. I just don't care anymore. I've lost caring ability. If Chris Johnson had any brains, unlike what he did while he handled Mike McCagnan, like this year, like getting him the draft, the free agency, you'd say, you know what? While we're going through this rebuild for the 35th time in the history of organization, maybe my head coach has to earn the right to do the rebuild. And when you go two and fourteen or three and thirteen. You don't earn that right. You get your ass out of here because clearly you can't coach. But that's only if he had brains, though. We, again, we know he doesn't, so they'll probably give him a five-year extension knowing the Jets because they're going to promote him for yeah. being bad or something. I have no idea. But, yeah. dude, this is as bad as it gets. And, and, like, that's why it's like you almost well, – like, I hate losing. I hate the Dolphins and everything else. But then it's like, you know, if they lose a real clunker on Sunday, it's like, wow, that may open Chris Johnson's eyes where, you know what, maybe it is worse than I think it is. And maybe injuries aren't the part because the Dolphins, if they don't have injuries – they just have guys they don't want to play. Like Howard's out. They trade away Drake. I mean, they 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 have nobody, dude, other than receivers. So it's just yeah. like you lose to them, man. It's like what if, what are we doing? <laughs> I I'll tell you and what. Paco look, Charlton. I hear you. I'm sorry, but... Paco Charlton too. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, look, I hear what you're saying, but you know when you look at the fact that, um, you know. Chris Johnson hired this guy to come in at the most pivotal, probably the most pivotal point of our franchise because we finally got a franchise quarterback. We knew that he was being mishandled by Bates. We knew that the last coaching staff just had no clue what they were doing. He hired this guy knowing that where he had just, what he had just done with the Dolphins, where he had just came from, where he just completely destroyed that franchise. He brought him right in here and gave our franchise quarterback right over to him just handed him Sam yep. Darnold, something that we've been looking for for decades. So when you say things like, well, if Chris Johnson had a brain, or if he, he, he believes in Adam Gaze. If he didn't, he wouldn't have fired Mike McCagnin. It took Adam Gaze, what, uh, like maybe two weeks to convince him to fire Mike McCagnin? <laughs> At right yep. stepping in the door? And this is coming, uh, again, he came from a team where he himself had the final say on the roster and completely obliterated that team stepped in here and then said, you know what? This guy over here isn't doing his job, Chris. He doesn't know personnel. You should fire him. And he did it. <laughs> he did it. He really did it. So if he had Chris Johnson's ear that much to come in and he has so much power because he does have a lot of power, it's clear as day. Hell, even the general manager candidate that we brought in was one of the biggest things that we talked about. Can he work with Adam Gates? Not if, you know, before we were even talking about him being a good, man- a good general manager, whether he knew personnel or not, the first check on the, on the box was, can he work with Adam Gates? Because if he can't, Gates is going to get him out of here. That was the first thing that we talked yep. about. So, look, I, I believe that he's going to be the guy for the rebuild. Even if we lose to the Dolphins and the Giants and whatever else, you know, we might, maybe he loses the locker room, maybe the team just quits for the rest of the year or whatever. I, I truly believe he's going to be the guy going forward and he's going to be the guy in charge of the rebuild because he's already had too much power already early. What else can you do? All right. We're going to go to Omar in Brooklyn. Omar, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going, Tyson? How's it going, Joe? Uh, dude, Jet Dolphins, man. This is some exciting stuff. Right. Um... If you could think of a Halloween game, the scariest game on the on the schedule, I think this might be the one. You know, you think <laughs> Bengals, right. Redskins, you think Bengals, Redskins, and then Jets and Dolphins say, "Hold my beer." It's just as simple as that. <laughs> you know. Well, see, the thing is too with this game, it's the Ryan Fitzpatrick factor. The guy is crazy enough and wild enough to actually find a way to win a game like thirty four, thirty one, or something. Especially the Jets' yeah. offensive line can't block for Sam, which. I mean, what's your level of confidence there? Do you think the Jets line will finally wake up and do something? I think the secret is out that Gase obviously does not know how to run his offense after his first script is done. And we already know the head coach of the Dolphins is a protege of Bill Belichick. And he just saw his, his, you know, know, he saw the person, he saw Bill Belichick dismantle us with with blitzes, you know, and then have it happen again with Jaguars. So, would I be shocked if Flores does that in this game? No, absolutely not. And would I be shocked that we don't pick up those stunts and blitzes up the middle? I won't be shocked. So, I mean, 
honest to God, honestly, I don't think this is going to work well for us. I think, I think the, the secret's out. The secret's out. We don't know how to adjust when it comes to blitzing. And mm-hmm. it's going to be a sad... I, I, I truly, truly believe it's going to be a sad day on Sunday when we watch it. I truly do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and I want I want to thank you for calling in, and, and you know you're, you're speaking the truth. I've watched this offensive line get beat by simple. I'm talking about the most simple of stunts. Mm-hmm. I mean, guys just literally, and they can't get it blocked. It's unbelievable. And like you said, Adam Gaze as well. The second he has to go away from his scripted game plan, it's over. He'll go yeah. brain dead, and he'll just stand there and watch things happen. One of the things that really blows my mind that I watched happen as well was his usage of Le'Veon Bell. It's, it's horrid. Mm-hmm. And going into this week, I would think that there's a lot of pressure on him to get Le'Veon the football. So do you think that Le'Veon Bell will be a bigger part of the game plan this week? I believe so. And I think it's such a sad thing to say. And if we dig into it, let's think about it, right? In the beginning, we were saying, were you, remember, we were saying, we're running down Le'Veon Bell. Remember, like, when we were dealing with Lou Falk, that fiasco. We're running him down, we're running him down, we're running him down. I honestly yeah. think Gates doubled down and said, you know what? You guys say I'm using him too much. I'm not going to use him. I honestly think he was that petty. I swear. Yeah, I he's spiteful he like petty. that. Yeah, he's very spiteful like that. Not to mention, he didn't even want the guy. So would it, would it be, would I put it past him that, all right, you guys are complaining I'm using the guy too much that you all want. I didn't even want him. I'm not even going to utilize him. I don't even want the guy. I would not put that past Gates at all. That's the type of person he is. I would not, everybody in the NFL knows that Gates is spiteful like that. Everybody, except, obviously, Chris Johnson and, and Mike McCagney. They're the only ones that don't know anything else in the NFL, clearly. So, Omar, what are, you, what are your thoughts about the defense? Leonard Williams is now gone, and they have no middle linebackers because they're all hurt. And you have Jamal Adams, who's going to probably be a man on a mission but could be a little reckless. Do you think the defense will get after Ryan Fitzpatrick, or are they going to kind of be sloppy? There's, there's two things. We, Watching Ryan Fitzpatrick for the time that he's been with the Jets, we know one, two things about him. One, he's good at first read options. He's good at that first read. If you do not uh, confuse him, if you do not mix it up, if you do not mix up the coverages, he can give you those six touchdown games. That's how he's able Mm -hmm. to do it. But if you do mix up those coverages, if you are able to scheme properly, Ooh, it's going to be glorious. He's going to give you six interceptions. And that's really what it comes down to. Is Greg Williams going to be able to utilize those middle linebackers who are most likely going to be doing most of the calling? I don't know if they're going to trust Jamal with all of this situation going on and everything. Who's going to be calling the plays? Who's going to get people in the right positions to be able to outsmart Fitzpatrick? And that's the main question. I don't know if if we have the personnel right now to do that, especially with the middle linebackers we have. You know, that, that middle of the field is wide open with those guys. It truly is. It's wide open in the middle of the field. And do I trust Ryan Fitzpatrick to hit those? It depends. I, I mean, that's all I could say. You know, it, it, <laughs> it's a difficult thing to, to, really, to really diagnose. Who's going who's gonna to be worse? That, that's what it comes down to. Who's going to be worse? <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a battle. It's a battle of yeah. You're absolutely right, man. It's like there's you know they, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for Ryan Fitzpatrick to make plays. Does he take advantage of it or not? Because they do have good receivers that can actually mm-hmm. take advantage of things. So, mm-hmm. so you look at this game, man. What what is what is your prediction for this game on Sunday? Oh wait, before I get the prediction, can I say one thing? Okay. It's about Jamal Adams. Sure. It, it really bothers me <laughs> yeah. because I love Jamal Adams. But I don't like how he's doing things because yeah. I truly, truly believe he's trying to play both sides of the coin here. I really, really, truly believe he tried to get out of the Jets and he wanted to be a cowboy. And I truly, truly believe he was in on it. And because it didn't go his way and because he doesn't want to be scrutinized, I think he's trying to act like he had no involvement. And that's really upsetting. And it's like, I understand you don't want to be here. Just be upfront. You know, if you don't want to be here, just say it. You know, I don't want to hear it from uh, Ryan Clark on ESPN in the morning. I don't want to hear that. I, you know, just say it. We all know you guys are buddies. We know you guys are pals, your LSU brothers. We know he's your talking head. You know, he doesn't just talk. You know, I don't want yep. to hear Ryan Clark saying, 
oh, they should trade Jam- uh, Sam Darnold. Who's that coming from? Ryan Clark's just <laughs> randomly saying that? That's coming from Jamal. You, yep. you know, that's very, uh, to me, that's no. very upsetting. It's very, yeah. very upsetting because there's one thing to, to, um, to, to uh, it's one thing to not want to be here. It's another thing to try to downplay and degrade your quarterback. I do not like that at all. I don't like how he's going about it. He should have been had a conversation with um with Gase and and, and um and um Douglas. And truthfully, I don't think they're going to trade him to the Cowboys. I think this year they're going. I think in the offseason they're going to trade him, and out of spite, they're not going to trade him to the Cowboys. Yeah, but see, yeah, Omar, we have to let you go. What's your prediction for the game on Sunday? Oh, prediction. Ooh, um, 10-7, Dolphins. (laughs) (laughs) Have a good night, (laughs) man. I had a feeling that was coming. Yeah, we'll go go back into that Jamal Adams thing, too. We'll also cover more of the X's and O's of Dolphins, Jets. Um, There are some other matches we can look at. I mean, obviously, it's not an exciting game, so we'll try to change it up a little bit. But, Joe, we're going to take a quick break from football and talk about something a lot more important, and that's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which was last month. But we had to change our guests a little bit because Tuesday's show was complete chaos, and we wanted to make sure that this was the right mm-hmm. forum for it. Having Catherine come on during our chaos on Tuesday was probably a terrible idea, so we were smart enough <laughs> to move that off to Friday. So we're going to bring on Catherine Cooper from the Sisters Networks. Can you bring her on? Oops. Hi. Catherine, this is Joe and Tyson. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? We're doing pretty good for a Friday night. Thank you for giving us some time. Sure. I was just listening to your to, to you guys' conversation, and I was trying to read up on it yet, so uh, it was kind of interesting to me. <laughs> You're not missing much. They're not a very good football team right now, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Okay, and Ms. Cooper, I want to thank you for coming on the show. You know, I, I couldn't wait to speak to you about breast cancer awareness and spreading uh, breast cancer awareness to all of our listeners. I also want to thank you for doing the work that you do with the Sisters Network. But can you tell us, what is your personal connection to the fight against breast cancer? Well, my personal fight against um, for the fight against breast cancer is personal. It's very personal because... I myself is a 19-year survivor. Um, My husband is a three-year survivor. And I have a sister and a cousin who are, one is a 10-year and one is 11-year survivor. So for me, it's very personal because um, someone helped me to become the person that I am to do what we need to do as far as um, being a not a spokesperson, but being able to, to help women, and, and, and I'm primarily talking about African-American women, and we do help all women, but we focus on them so that they um, can deal with breast, breast cancer in a, in a different perspective, being informed um, on how to get the necessary means as far as the educational part, the awareness, the, the resources that are available to, to to help try and, like, take charge, take control of what breast cancer is doing to, to all women. And we just, like I said, we just focus on, you know, what we can do in our African-American communities. Catherine, we've had on a, a series of guests all month long, and one of the most important things they kept telling us was self-exams. How important is that for men and women? That is the most important thing to start out with because, you know what, if if you do breast self-exams um, for yourself, then if you feel anything different in your body, I mean a lump or, or something that's just not normal, then you are the first person to feel that. And if you're not in a situation or if you don't know that these are the things that you, you should look for, um, uh, on a monthly basis to make sure that you don't feel any changes because early detection helps save lives. And this will cause you to go and speak to a doctor and even to the point where you will get a mammogram to see if there's something going on there. And that's why it's important to do self-breast exams because no one is going to come to you. You have to be your own advocate to check your body, to know your body. And it's about 
knowing you, knowing your your, your significant other or, or whomever you're dealing with, because those are the people that really find out things that are happening to your body even before anybody else does. So that's why it's important to do to do the breast self exams. I completely agree with everything that you're saying, ma'am. And often when you deal with men, men are very macho. You know, we're, we're very kind of dismissive to the idea of breast cancer affecting us. What would you say to men that don't think breast cancer has anything to do with them and that it's just a disease that affects women? Well, I I can only, you know, attest to that because, you know what, my husband is a three-year breast cancer survivor, and Breast cancer for him was never a thought in his mind, but because he has been supportive to me, supportive to our group, and doing a lot of outreach, when he found a lump on his chest, um, he knew it was something different, and that was because he was prepared. He, He knew that there was something that he needed to do. And believe it or not, I didn't know men um, do um, mammograms, but I found out that they do mammograms. Uh, they have mammograms just like we do because you know what? The only difference is, you know, we have um, the, the 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 ductal uh, glands with the milk in it. They do not, but they go through the same procedure, the same um, early detection like we do. And I say men should check their breasts, just their chest, just like women do, because you know what? It's like you get used to doing something and even though it's not in greater numbers as it is for women, you have to check yourself because you are you will be the only advocate for yourself to do what needs to be done. And that's why it's better and it's great that men are becoming just as aware as, as women are. Once again, we're speaking with Catherine Cooper, who's very kind to join us on a Friday night. How important is the Sisters Network and how do they impact the community? Well, Sisters Network is very, very important because what we do is um, we are a a breast cancer survivorship organization, and what we do is outreach into the communities. We go into churches. We go into um, go to health fairs. We go anywhere where we can disseminate information to people because a lot of times, you know, we always – take everything for granted, thinking that, oh, everybody has a cell phone, everybody has um, what's necessary to get to to, to media. But there's a lot of people who do not. And we have found that people will accept information if you put it in their hands and they're more likely to follow up because you need to have something as far as, like I said, resources, um, someone saying, hey, New Jersey Seed, and that's a program here in New Jersey that will help pay for mammograms, um, prostate, colorectal exams, and all these things are in our different hospitals in our areas, and they're sponsored through the New Jersey Seed program, which pays for that. And it's very important for organizations, grassroots organizations like ours, to go out and make sure that people are getting the right information so that when they do feel or know that something is going on, they know that they have the right information and they can pick up the phone and and call us directly, and we will help them through the process. And I don't mean just by um, saying, oh, well, we'll give you X amount of money to help do this. We will go through the process with you. And that's what's important about this oper- this organization because it's about making people aware. Um, and I always say for me, I'm I'm busy trying to live i'm i'm a i'm surviving i'm thriving and i'm living my best life and i want each and every other woman to feel that way because you you need to know what's available and that's what we do ma'am i want to let you know that i truly appreciate and i want to thank you for all the work that you do you guys are doing fabulous work over there at the sisters network but how can our listeners get involved and get themselves you know, intertwine with the system that worked out. Well, you can reach us several ways. You can go on our um, national website because we are an affiliate chapter of Sisters Network, Inc., and you can go on the national website, which is www.sistersnetworkinc.org, and 
they have affiliate chapter listing, and Sisters Network, Essex County, is listed there. You can reach us there, or you can reach us by um, sending us an email at um, Essex County at Sisters Network Inc. dot org, or you can reach us by phone by calling us at nine seven three three five one zero zero three four. Or you can always reach us by sending us um, uh, a note or or an email, sending us information to our post office box, which is P.O. Box 1992, Newark, New Jersey, 07101. And um, if I didn't say it, our email address is Essex County at sistersnetworkinginc.org. So there are several ways that you can reach us. And if you wanted to assist monetarily by giving us a donation, we have on our Facebook page, which is Sisters Network Essex County, a donation button where you can um, tap on a donation button and it will bring us bring our information up and you will be able to no- donate that way. Or like I said, you can send us a check to our post office box address, and we will definitely respond to you to let you know that we got it and um, send you an acknowledgement letter. So those are the ways that you can reach out to us. Well, Catherine, first of all, we want to thank you for joining us tonight, and thank you for sharing your personal story with us and your husband as well. We definitely appreciate that. And thank you for everything you're doing to help and raise awareness with the Sisters Network. It's phenomenal, and you guys have all taught us a lot about this. I am so glad that you guys were willing and, 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 and wanting to hear what goes on into our neighborhoods. And because this is a New York, New York Jets um, radio blog, I know a lot of men are listening. And trust me, they need to be motivated to say, you know what, I have to check myself just like every other, everybody else because, you know what, cancer does not discriminate. And that's obviously Um, known by the men who have come forward to say they had breast cancer. And that's a lot for guys to say because, like you said earlier, men are macho. What do you say, machos? They don't want to tell it, but you have to tell it because, you know what, breast cancer is something that you have to talk about. You have to let other people know, hey, it's not a death sentence. It's about living. And if we don't share this information, then you don't know who you could be helping just by listening to somebody else tell their story, tell their journey. So I'm saying kudos to all men who take the opportunity to do what they need to do. But for women, I know we are pushing the issue that early detection helps save lives, and we want all women and men to do that because that's the starting point and that's what's truly important to let you know what's going on. Very well said. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and have a great evening. Thank you so much for having me, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, once again, that was Catherine Cooper from the Sisters Network. And, Joe, you did a phenomenal job organizing this. As everybody knows, last month mm-hmm. was Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but we pushed that last interview to tonight because it's just a much better platform where we can talk about it with a sound mind and nice and calm and relaxed about it. So, you know, like she said, you know, with, with men, it's super serious, man. It's like we're all macho. We're like, ah, it won't happen to me. It's not going to happen to me. Yep. And lo and behold, it happens to somebody you know. So uh, it's very serious. It's very real. And, you get, you know, like I said, it's just, you know, check it. It's like, you know, self-exams are important, man. Yeah, yeah. And I want to thank Mrs. Cooper for coming on and spreading all that knowledge and everything that she said about the Sisters Network. They do excellent work over there, helping people out, helping people through the process, and as she said as well, sticking with them. Because a lot of it, a lot of people don't have families. A lot of people are dealing with this disease just on their own, and they don't know where to turn or what to do. So you have hands walking with you, guiding you with guiding you the entire way, and also there's men. I keep preaching to everyone, listen, I understand that we have a lot of male listeners, and they're thinking, hey, well, I'm macho, I'm the biggest dude on the block, I'm the dog in the yard, nothing's going to happen to me, breast cancer is not my issue. Oh, my friend, it is. Cancer does not discriminate. It can hit you as well. Get yourself examined, and early detection is key. Examine yourself, too. Don't be too macho to fill in yourself and see if you see a lump or not. It could truly save your life. The earlier they detect it, you know, the more that they can help you. Uh, so get involved any way you can. Again, Sisters Network of Essex County, um, they do great work. Like she said as well, you can donate. You can also volunteer your time. It's across all of our social medias. I know 
you know, we're one day out from the end of the month for breast cancer. The fight against it is year-round. So please get involved any way you can with the Sisters Network of Essex County. Okay, now we'll try to transition back to something a lot, a lot, meaning, a lot more meaningless than uh, this. It's uh, the New York Jets and the football team. So, <laughs> Josh, we're talking about you got. It's just it's painful, man. It's just not even. It's not enjoyable. But you have. It's not. It's just a joke. The team's a joke. Adam Gates is a joke. The well, team's a train wreck. I'm tired of the locker room. I'm tired yeah. of the press conferences. I'm tired of all of it. I'm tired of hearing everything. Yeah. But we will go to our next caller because that's what we do. We're going to go to our good friend mm-hmm. Steve. Steve, what's up, man? Hey, guys. How you doing? Well, it's Friday night, man, so that's a good thing. Other than that, you know, same old Jets. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. It's another tough season for us. But, I mean, you know, now we're getting ready for, you know, our next game coming up on Sunday. We have the Miami Dolphins on Sunday. I mean, it's Adam Gaze going up against his former team he coached. And, you know, we're going up against a former familiar face in Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, and Joe, earlier in the show, by the way, just to let you know, we came off of a mm-hmm. Thursday night game when we when we faced Fitzpatrick in Tampa Bay. It wasn't a bye week, in case if you forgot. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, the thing when I look in this game is, and listen, I know it's going to be, it's probably not going to be the prettiest Jets and Dolphins games we have. Cause, I mean, we've seen a lot of great games in the past between the Jets and the Dolphins, you know, from the Monday Night Miracle and, you know, that game when they scored a gazillion points, like I think that was back in the 1980s. This is probably going to be one of the ugliest games between the uh, the Jets and the Dolphins. I mean, it all starts, you know, with two quarterbacks that have been struggling this year. Um, I mean, and you look at the, hopefully, you know, Beecham comes back. I mean, I know he's questionable for this game. I mean, even though the Dolphins coming into this game are 0-7, I mean, I just hope that one thing that doesn't happen is, is that because they're going to be at home. And in their last game, they got off to a fast start on Monday Night Football against Pittsburgh. I mean, they were up 14 to nothing in the beginning of that game. I mean, they ended up blowing that game because, I mean, obviously, you know, it's a team going through a rebuild, and that's expected when it comes to with teams going through rebuilds. But, I mean, the Dolphins do have some talent on their offense. I mean, I mean, the best the players that, that you got to watch out for are Devontae Parker and Albert Wilson. I mean, when well, I remember last year in week two when, when the Dolphins came to MetLife for the home opener, I remember at times when Albert Wilson was running all over the field against us. I mean, and, and he was just too fast for our Jets defense at times uh, last year. I mean, so those are two players that I worry about on the offense. I mean, on the defensive side, I mean, the only player that I could really think of is Xavier Howard, but the, Dol- the Dolphins just recently put him on season-ending IR. I mean, I-, I-, I don't know what to expect for this game. I mean, I just hope the Jets do get off to a fast start. They don't get off to a fast start against Miami. It's not going to be a pretty game, and it could o- most likely end up being, if we don't get a fast start, we could give the Dolphins their first W of the season. So, guys, fire away. Yeah, I mean, see, I think while the, the Dolphins could be undermanned, I think they could be better coached. And that's going to be the one thing that's going to be interesting, especially when they're attacking our offense, where, you know, Sam Darnold behind this offensive line, where now you have Jonathan Harrison starting, you have Beecham who could play, but if he is playing, he's going to be banged up, where they're going to do the same thing and just blitz and show different looks and, and just get after Sam. And I think, to me, I think this game's going to be a shootout. It's going to be like a 34-31 where they're going to be, just, just scoring like crazy because I think neither defense is going to do anything. Oh. I think we have no middle yeah. linebackers, well, and I think that Fitzpatrick's going to throw the ball like crazy, and then the Jets are going to. I do. I, I don't. I think there'll be no resistance on defense at all. I think it's going to be a complete shootout, and it, it's. That's the way I feel. I mean, I don't know. What the hell do I know? You know, I mean, I mean, one thing. The one thing I will say is, you know, I mean. I mean, yeah, the Dolphins' defense this year is not that very good either. I mean, they give up at least. 20 points per game. I mean, if you go back to their first game of the season, I mean, they gave up 59 points to be more. They gave up 59 points, and then they gave up 43 points the following week against New England. I mean, they have they, 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 no, their first Steve, like, couple Steve, of weeks, on. they but, gave but up Steve, over 100 points. So look, at, look at the points we've given up to teams. I mean, we give the 33 to the Patriots. If we, if we play Baltimore, Ooh. where we're playing right now, Baltimore – 
Baltimore dropped 45 on us, and Lamar Jackson go to Hall of Fame based on the game because we wouldn't be able to stop anything they do. I mean, so you know, keep, oh. keep things in perspective. We were getting we're getting blown out on a weekly basis. I mean, Minshew just made us up for Christ's sakes. I mean, hey, listen. I mean, I mean I listen, we're going to see what lying? happens next Sunday, bro. <laughs> no, you're right? not lying at all. No, am I lying? Like, all, you're of, not a sudden, lying like, all, at all. of a sudden, our no. defense is vaunted or something? Please. No, you're not lying at all. At all. And that, and that's the sad thing. And, I, and I've talked to multiple people, and I've told them this. A lot of people were saying, well, hey, Joe, you know, the schedule is lightening up. It's about to get easy. And I'm looking at people like, hey, don't you understand we're an easy team, too? Did you not see these last couple of weeks, what we've done out there, how many people have come in and smacked us? I mean, you look at that Jaguars game, we were letting up big plays left and right to start that game. We let up big plays all throughout that game. It was crazy. And that's not even like a huge big play offense. I mean, you talk about, you know, we got beat by the Patriots, but the, the first game we got smashed by the Patriots too. I think we should have lost something like 6-3-0 to three to zero in both of those games. They gifted us two touchdowns. I mean, come on. Like, it's looked pretty bad. And, look, I understand the Dolphins are a team that everyone is looking at and they're tanking and they're doing whatever they can to get a, get a pick, but they're going to be motivated. And that's what – my question is for Steve, and I want to thank you for calling in, Steve. Do you think that all of the things that they have going on there, from them wanting to beat Adam Gaze to them, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick wanting to get back at us, that revenge factor, do you think that will be huge for them to get them motivated in this game? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the thing. I mean, you know, because Miami is going up against a, a guy who coached them for three years. I mean, he did a lot of bad things, you know, to that organization down in South Beach, Florida. I mean – but the, the, the thing is, though, because that is my worst fear, is because I know with the Dolphins being winless coming into this game, I know that they're going to have a lot of motivation going into that game. I mean, I mean facing against Adam Gaze, you know, a coach that, you know, that, that coached them down to the ground. And, you know, he was one of the reasons why. I mean, this is a thing that I fear for the future coming up, you know, with the Jets. I mean, because he feared a lot of things that, that, that he did in Miami. Like, Miami lost a lot of, like, their their best players that were supposed to be stars. Like, look at this. Jarvis Landry, Jay Ajayi, uh, Laramie Tunsil, Nika Fitzpatrick, uh, uh, Kenyon Drake, who, I mean, I mean, if you guys watched the Thursday night game last night between the 49ers and the Cardinals, Kenyon Drake's longest run this year when he was with Miami was only 11 yards. Last night, he actually had a great game against San Francisco last night. And, and, and the thing is, the thing that I look at it also, too, in that game is, Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be throwing the ball a lot. They're not going to be handing off to the run, to their running back. Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be throwing well, they don't the ball have any running backs. Cause, well, yeah, the Dolphins have no running backs. So, so what's your prediction for Sunday, Steve? <laughs> um... Oh, God, I mean, I'm not going to predict, like, what that guy just did, like, 10 to 7. I'm not doing that. Um, I predicted this game. I mean, I think it will be a high-scoring game. I'm going to go 31-27 Jets. There you go. See some positivity on the show, finally. Good job, Steve. <laughs> hey, listen. We've got to deal with this, but now we got to deal with a troll, an idiot, calling in with all that nonsense, man. Go get yourself a life. All right? Like, yeah, like, what, what I had a feeling. What around here? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Enough's enough. Like, I, look, I, I love the trolls. I get it. But you you going too far, man. Go go get yourself a life and do something else. Yeah, I had a feeling. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go on offense. Some of the matchups, Joe, like we looked at the, the Dolphins' defense isn't that good, especially with Xavier and Howard out. It's like if yeah. they can keep Sam upright, which is a big if, you could see, like, Robbie Anderson could have a big day. I mean, the Jets should be able to, like, Sam Donald should be able to have a big day. Like, just, he could throw the ball over the place. I mean, because they, like, Robbie Anderson would just yeah. torch the hell out of them. Like, they, 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 they could take advantage of so many things, but the X factor is Brian Flores and knowing the Patriots' defense and, fi- and yeah. knowing the holes in the Jets' offense. That's the biggest, mm-hmm. that's your, if you have a concern, that's what it is. Yeah, at look. I, I think that, that 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 is one of my concerns as well. Like you said, if you, if you look at Flores, for me, his guy that comes from a tree, comes from that Patriots place, and he could look at what they saw, what they saw the Patriots did, and implement some of those things, uh, you know, against us in this game yet again. 
Uh, you look at how they're handling business defensively there. He can scheme some stuff up, send some guys the same way the Jaguars did too. Of course, they don't necessarily have the talent, but if they can scheme correctly and get guys put in places, he can come after Sam the exact same way. So I'm worried about the offensive game plan on our side protecting Sam, especially when you're looking at how banged up our offensive line is. Um, offensively for them, I think that, like you said, they could they could throw the ball around. I mean, they got some guys out there. They got Devontae Parker. I talked about Alvin Wilson. If our if we're not up to snuff, and especially, you know, with Tremaine being out, which, thank goodness, you know, I, I don't wish for any player to be hurt, but that, that guy was terrible. So now you got Harrison coming in, and hopefully he can get back into what he was doing before we all of a sudden, you know, found him on a bench somewhere, and he was never really playing that much. So hopefully with him being out there now, running around, you know, keeping the ball from out of these Dolphins receivers' hands, they won't be able to light us up the way that they have. And hopefully we can bring a little bit of pressure as well. I want to see Greg Williams maybe scheme up some stuff too and get after the Dolphins, get after Ryan Fitzpatrick. Because one of the things that we talked about when he was here, dude, you send some pressure at Ryan Fitzpatrick, he gets erratic, he often makes bad decisions, he locks on the wide receivers. He did that pretty much damn near throughout his entire career. So if we can make him into a quarterback that's going to make mistakes, it does nothing but bode well for us. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, that's that's the goal is to get pressure. And then, you know, on offense, can they just get Le'Veon Bell established, how much they use him? It's like, and it's, then it's the other thing is, like, what's the mindset of this team? Are they distracted? Are they prepared? Are they motivated? Or are they sleepwalking? Like, you just don't know what really to expect. Like, the the whole Jamal mm-hmm. Adams thing, which we've been talking about, to me, I, it's got to be a distraction at some point to this locker room. And it's like, if the Dolphins do score first, does this team just mail it in and be like, oh, here we, you know, like, is there any fight in them? Yeah. How to, like it's just, it's a lot. It's a really weird game. And like I said, like if the Jets win, I really don't care. It doesn't. It means nothing to me because they're playing a bad team that's got that's void of talent. I mean, they're just they're they're tanking on purpose. So if you lose to this team, it's you know terrible. And if you win, it's not really a big feather in your cap because you're doing something you're supposed to do. I mean, it, in theory, mm-hmm. this Jets team should win this game by at least ten points. Will they? We have no idea. Yeah. But it, it's you know what I mean. Like this is one of those games where it's just. Like, you worry about it because in, in years past, this is a game they come out flat and they don't play well for a long period of time. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm hoping that they don't come out flat. Um, this is going to be on Adam Gaze. If this, team, if this team comes out lifeless and they just don't get it and they are completely just lost and they don't understand what's happening, then, I mean, what else can you say? <laughs> if they're not ready to go and fired up in this game against a team that's hungry, you know, we, we talked about them, they're not a very good team, but they're going out there and they're competing. I'm pretty sure that they don't want to lose every game this season. They probably at least want to win one. At least, you know, the players for their own pride want to win one. So with all this going on, and we talked about, you know, the revenge factor as well, with, you know, Fitz wanting to get revenge on us, with the franchise wanting to get revenge on Gaze and try their best to get him fired and embarrass him yet again. You know, it's a big chance coming up for him, you know, Sunday. So all of that is going to be ready. And if this team comes out and they're not prepared, then I don't even know what to tell you. All right, we're going to go to our good friend Tyrone. What's up, man? Yo, Tyrone. Yo. Oh, boy. What's up, oh, man? Yo. You been there? Hey, what's going on, man? Sorry, man. I just, at this football game, man, yelling at my son and them because they out here playing, bro. Make no sense. <laughs> look at, looking like looking like the Jets out here today, bro. Killing me, bro. <laughs> oh. hey, Tyrone, yo, what, what trying is, to go for the, What's your level? Huh? Of, what's, what's your level of confidence for Sunday? Do you think this is going to be a walk in the park for the Jets? Or are you nervous about this game? I'm not nervous, but I want Miami to win. I'm at a zero confidence level. Nah. I told you, man. Listen, I wasn't joking last week, bro. Dead serious, bro. I want Miami to win. Uh, you know, I want to get blown out, and I want Gates to get fired. Absolutely, all, all, all in that order. Damn. I have zero confidence. I have zero confidence in Gates, man. I have zero confidence in this team right now, bro. Nah, man. Yeah, yeah. and everybody's yo. People want to get all happy. We beat we beat the Miami Dolphins. Oh, listen, I ain't trying to be funny, bro. And I'm being dead serious. They probably will beat us, bro. They're pro- you know why? They're a better team. They're a better organization. You know what I mean? We suck. Wow. It, it's horrible, man. We have we have bad leadership, man. Our coach is garbage. You know what I'm saying? And that's the whole problem, man. You know, he's alienated. You know, Joe, you said this, and I'm going to give Joe all the credit in the world. This man has alienated our team for <laughs> six months. 
Like, bro, you Easy. built the whole culture in six <laughs> months. Listen, when Easy. I say I'll take Ty Bowles back today, I'm not joking. I'll take Jeremy Bates and Ty Bowles back for three years over one year of Adam Gates. It is horrible, man. Like, it's so it's so funny, man. I can't even get excited about a game that we should go into Miami and kill them. I can't. We, bro, listen, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's nothing to look forward to. I'm watching my rookie quarterback. I mean, I'm watching my franchise quarterback get murdered every week. I'm get, I'm watching this guy get blitzed. And I'm watching the offensive line let guys, free runners, get free shots from my quarterback every single week. I see that we got one of the best running backs in the league. Has been the last four or five seasons, and you can't figure out what to do with Le'Veon Bell. We got a, we got a really good receiver in Robbie Anderson that you can't even get the ball to. So now you're gonna tell me that you know you want to you want to pick on a, a cornerback? So you want to keep throwing the ball to Demarius Thomas, who catches one out of every five? Yo, they're running our routes, bro. They know your playbook, man. It's no, it's you're not inventive. He's not doing anything but a borderline. Ba- Listen. I'm watching a high school football game right now, and they ran about three plays bro, I had never seen before. I want to hire them for the Jets, this offense coordinator, bro, because this is creativity <laughs> out here, bro. This is a high school game. Joe, they ran a double screen reverse, bro. I ain't never. I ain't never had that done before. You know what I mean? Hey, Listen, man. I... I'm telling you. Hey, you man. Look, first off, I want to thank you. Listen, I want to thank you for calling in. I tell you what, Adam Gaze runs screens on a weekly basis that I've seen him run before. <laughs> you know, I'll be calling him out, you know. And, and as far as dividing the team, dividing the locker room, listen, when you're good at something, you're good at something. And that's what he's good at. You know what I'm saying? And he sticks to it. He, he makes it happen everywhere he goes. And it, it just it blows my mind how bad he's been so far and that he still has people that, you know, defend him, still has people that have his back. I just I don't understand it. And my question for you, Tyrone, is going into this game, do you think Gaze will put together a game plan that will protect Sam and not have him taking the hits that he's taken so far this season consistently? Joe, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. A smart person will probably say yes, but I'm an idiot, so I'm going to say no. Because it's, it's just the facts. <laughs> you watch a quarterback get killed every week, bro. You watch your franchise quarterback, man, get, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got this kid scared back there, yeah. brain jittery. He's like a little schoolgirl back there, bro. He's scared. And you can't blame him because he's getting hit from all ways from Sunday. You're telling me, man, that we – I'm going to keep harping on this, man, until we wake up as fans, bro. We need to boycott this and make them sell this team, bro. This is horrible. Uh, Our offensive line that's is never the worst happening. ever, bro. That's, but Tyson, listen, you, you couldn't see Gary V fixing this problem in, in, in two years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yo, but, dude, that's we like a Tyson. This. We've been saying this – We've been saying this for years. Oh, ownership's the problem. Ownership's the problem. It's never going to change, man. It's not going to change anytime soon. Now it's like you got to hope that Joe Douglas and Adam, well, Joe Douglas gets it solved because Adam Gates isn't the answer for sure. But, I mean, but Tyra, would, if the Jets win on Sunday, would that make you feel good? Would you be proud of it? No. It's the Dolphins. They don't, they don't, listen, the Dolphins sell every good player on their team, bro. Every good player on their team, bro. Why would I be excited that we'd be the team that we're supposed to be? You know what I'm saying? Listen, man, I'm going to tell you something, man. I don't like bullies, bro. I never have, bro. Listen, I'm 6'8", man. Tyson, you know, I'm 6'8". I'm 370, bro. I'm trained to go. Yep. So I'm not going to fight bullied, nobody 5'1". I don't need to. I don't need to fight nobody 5'1". <laughs> but if you 5'1", and you want you, bullied, you can get it. You know what I'm saying? Nah, whatever, Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, you know, so if you, beat a, if you beat a team you're supposed to beat, you can't get credit for that. And this is the problem, man. And this, this is the old thing where everyone said, well, Joe Douglas is supposed to fix the problem. If Joe Douglas was a real general manager, he would realize the kind of problem he had with Adam Gaze. The problem, problem that he's isolated his whole locker room when you have every player mm-hmm. going crazy. Now, and I, I'm going to be real with you. Jamal kind of disappointed me a little bit because he's kind of going over the deep end, bro. Like, come on, bro. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? You're acting like a shorty right now. Calm down. I understand you're a good player. But listen, you think I wouldn't take two ones for Jamal? In, in a, you know, I they would. offered a one and two, a one and two twos. You know what I'm saying? I would have thought about that. But you can offer me a one, a two first-round picks? Jamal, I'm sorry, buddy, but – you're a cornerback. I mean, you're, you're a safety. Bro, I need offensive linemen. I need like four of them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is what we need if we ever go move back. Crazy. How you got Le'Veon Bell who can't run the ball? Like, they're yeah. in the back. I mean, it's, it's so pathetic. So, you're telling me that our offensive coordinator is going to come up with a game plan? Listen, Miami going to beat the brakes off on Sunday. And I'm going to tell you what, bro, <laughs> and I hate to say this, I'm actually going to enjoy it, bro. 
It's the truth. Damn. Uh, I'm going to enjoy it. Because it's, it's, it, it's, it shows where we at as a team and as an organization, man. This got to change, bro. Listen, bro, I'm so sick of this rebuild work. We've been rebuilding it for 50 years, bro. We've yep. been rebuilding since no, I'm sick of it, too. You, I can't take it. Have you guys have you guys realized, man, we haven't taken an office lineman since Brick <laughs> and Mango, bro? Like, you know, worth and you, know, you, you realize – how how disheartening that is! That is just bad. It's just over, over, and over, man. I'm like so like on Tyson. You said the best. I'm so I'm sick of being sick, bro. I'm tired of this. I'm done, like bro. Yep. I just I go through the motions every this week. This is the first you know time, I mean? they like, do, like like now it's like you go on social media, like everybody's like, dude, you're so negative, you're so angry all the time. Like I love, dude. I look forward, forward to football Sunday every Sunday. I'm I'm always excited about it. Now yeah. I'm just like, oh, the freaking Jets are playing. Like it's not even fun, man. Like. There's nothing fun about it at all. No, no bright spots, no nothing. It's just it's a miserable experience for three hours. Well, you know what's crazy? When we were losing with bowl, at least we were competitive. We're not even competitive yep. now. And I think, that's, nope. I think that's, what, that's what kills me the most. At least when we, played with, at least when we had bowls, we were losing. We were, we were fighting, and we lost in the end. I can deal with that. But when you, when you yeah. guys get off the bus and don't show up, like the last game, we, we haven't showed up in weeks. So I hope we lose to Miami. I hope we lose to the Giants. What's your, I'm what's your prediction for the game? What's your prediction for Sunday? Oh, oh, this is this is an easy prediction right here, man. <laughs> and this is gonna be this is coming to fruition. Forty-two, oh. sixteen, Miami Dolphins. Oh my <laughs> God! Hey, bro, I really have, have a good night, man. <laughs> have a good night, man. Whoa! That's a, yeah, I mean, this is this is the state of our team right now, man. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, you know, it's like I tell you, Joe. The last couple of weeks, where it's like you try to do this preview show, and like I have no desire to do any research. I have no desire to analyze nothing. Cause I have no faith in anybody. Like, I don't, I don't believe in games. Yeah. I don't believe in the play calling, the effort. We have no idea. The Jamal Adams nonsense. You have the motivated Dolphins. Like, I just don't care. Like, I look forward to so many other games other than the Jets. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm more interested in, like, Giants and Cowboys go. in this game. Or, dude, like, it's just, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, seriously. Like, yeah, like I, like, they force you to go to a sports bar so you can watch other games. And, like, oh, that's real football. Like, last <laughs> night was fun to watch football. Like, like, seriously. I was like, wow, Cardinals 49ers. Like, wow, that's an offense. Like, and then I'm like, wait, other teams could lose offensive linemen and still play quality football? You're kidding me. The Jets can't exactly. do that. Every other team could go, we can't do that. So it's like, I don't even care. Yeah. Like, and, and that's the whole thing. Like, the biggest concern I have that going forward for the next four or five weeks is that the Jets beat, say, the Dolphins, the Redskins, and the Bengals, they're going to be proud of themselves. Like, oh, we bounced, we turned things around, we bounced back. No, you're beating three teams that are tanking. Like, they're losing yep. their purpose. Like, that's the problem. They're going to win, like, three games just because the teams aren't even trying. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, and it, look, I want to thank Tyrone for calling in, and you know I understand his frustration, and uh, he's not alone. There's a, there's a couple of people in his fan base that feel like the Dolphins are going to smash us like that as well. Um, you know, we see it across social media, but let me tell you something. This there's a lot going on here. Uh, the Jamal Adams situation, which is that situation, is definitely you know spiraled, <laughs> and and now you look at Gaze, a guy that we all know is not the guy. We all know he's not a head coach, and it looks like he's going to be you know, the guy that's going to be in charge of whatever the next phase is, whether it be another rebuild or whatever we're doing, and we all have questions about him as well going forward. I kind of feel like we're in that situation where we, that we were in with Todd Bowles after, after like year two or year one or whatever when we all knew, especially me, myself, saying, hey, this guy is not the guy. This guy should not be here. He should not be allowed to be in charge of the next rebuild, and we let him stay here, and he just continued to be garbage consistently throughout and made you wonder, like, where this team was going, what was going on with this team, and I can really see that going forward with with Adam Gaze. Um, You know, guys just not coming out competing. So he's got to put it together coming up, you know, against these Dolphins. If we go out there and we look like we just have no clue what's going on and we get our doors blown off, man, this fan base is going to erupt. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like – I don't even care. Like, I, 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 I want to see them lose because I want the more pressure on Gaze to make something happen. Like, something's got to change. I just don't think it's going to happen. I don't understand. No, I, I don't think it's happen. Yeah, but I mean, like, like I, I just don't understand how Chris Johnson can look at this team week in and week mm-hmm. out, have injuries and losses and losses, and not one person's been fired. 
Nobody's getting yeah. benched. Nothing has changed. Like, you'll think about it. Like, well, all this time, and any anything that's been changed on a roster has been due to injury, not due to him benching. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Tremaine Johnson once was benched. That's it. Other than that, nobody's yeah. been benched, dude. It's like, it's like, oh, we're just going to – status quo. Let's just keep losing, rolling out and losing. You know, the thing I think about with Chris Johnson, and you're, you're correct, because um, Tremaine was the only guy that was benched once, but – you got to remember, he went up to a fan in Jacksonville and said, you know, I hope the team shows up this week. So if you're walking up to people and you're saying things like that after watching this team play the way that we've played this entire year, something tells me that I don't think he thinks it's Adam Gaze. I think he thinks it's more the roster. That's what I truly kind of believe. I, I don't think that he thinks that, the, that, that Adam Gaze, the coaching, is bad. I don't think he thinks that Adam Gaze is a problem. I think he thinks that we don't have the players, which, again, would signal to why we're doing – possibly another rebuild while we're selling off all these players. So if you don't think that Adam Gaze is the problem <laughs> or a big part of the problem, because you can have two things be true. And, and, again, going back to the situation we have with Todd Bowles, Todd Bowles, you know, the roster wasn't necessarily good. It wasn't good at all because Mike McCagney was, was an idiot. But Todd Bowles was also a really bad head coach. And so when you think that Gaze is not the problem and we're going to go forward with him, boy, let me tell you something. You're about to see full-blown that he is a big part of the problem. The way he schemes, his game plans, the way he handles things. We're already talking about the issues in the locker room. It's players, the team's being divided. It's completely nuts, man. And I really fear that, again, he's not going to get fired, even if we lose to the Dolphins, even if we lose to the Giants. And he's going to be here for quite some time just ruining this team. Yeah, so I guess we'll do um, game predictions. I mean, these games like this are hard to do because it's just two lousy teams, and there's really not a lot to talk about. The injury report for the Jets is a complete joke. Um, at some mm-hmm. point, I'd love to know what the hell they do in practice because this is ludicrous to have half your roster on the injury report. The fact that nobody's even talking about this, like I'm not sure what the media is doing. Like instead of sitting there worried about if Jamal Adams is going to talk to Adam Gase, why don't you ask Adam Gase why half his team is freaking hurt and why these guys keep getting hurt in practice? Like, what the hell are they doing there? Yep. I mean, but that's, I guess, how, I don't want to tell somebody to do their job, but, but geez, How, how much of a factor, uh, you, you got a great point there, but how much of a factor do you think, or how much of a distraction do you think that this, um, this Adams situation could play within the team as well? Do you think it's going to be a big distraction coming up? It's, I think it can be down the line. I think it's going to get worse. I think right now it's like, mm. see, the thing, the thing that will calm things down is if they win. If they lose this game, I think the Adam thing's going to spiral out of control. I, I just do. I think it's this is just festering and festering. And if they lose, he's going to be in a bad mood again, and he's going to just try to, yeah. you know what I mean? I think that's just to silence him. I think a win. If he plays well and they win, he'll be like, "I told you so. I'm worth it." And this and that. And this is what I do. And blah blah blah, whatever. Mm-hmm. But if they lose, I think it's going to it's going to make it worse. Yeah. I'm yeah, I, I him, could, I could I'm, see. I'm so disappointed in him. It's ridiculous. I, I, I'm ridiculously disappointed in him. I, I could not be more disappointed. And he just won't let it yeah, go. I mean, like, just let it go, dude. Like, just move on. To say today he talked mm-hmm. to Chris Johnson, but I'm not ready to talk to. I'm not ready to talk to my coach, and general manager. Like, dude, seriously? Mm-hmm. Like, this is the approach you're taking as a leader, as yeah. a captain? Come on, mm-hmm. man. Like, you're making it worse. You're making yeah. the circus worse. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, I'm, I'm one that believes that. You know, do I believe Adams' side of the story more than Joe Douglas? Yes. But do I do I think that Adams is handling it poorly? Yes. I do think he's handling it poorly. I think he can handle this. He could have handled this a lot better than he has. Um, I don't initially think that he asked for a trade. I think he wanted to stay here. But I think that when he heard he was being shopped to multiple teams, which is exactly what he said, that he just – it just – absolutely blew him up. And what's crazy about this whole situation is a lot of people are acting like he just started saying that he was tired of losing and all these things. That's not true. If you go back and anybody remember, you remember the interview he did, uh, it was uh, Scott, who, who, what reporter did it, but he was talking to him and he said, we need dogs. You remember that, that whole interview, we yep. need dogs, yeah, all this year, stuff. Too. Well, yeah, it was, it was last year. I think it was after the Patriots game, after we lost to the Patriots, I think. Um, but if you guys go back and listen to that full interview, not just the clip of We Need Dogs, listen to that full interview, he talks about the structure of the franchise and, like, how things are jacked up. 
he talks about this. He talks about that he's tired of losing in that very interview. I'm telling you, go, go back and listen to that interview. He talks about the impact and how if you keep losing, for, uh, um, free agents don't want to come here. We've got to turn it around. We've got to be on the same page from top to bottom. He talked about these things. So him being frustrated with losing or him being frustrated with this answer, I don't think it just started. It damn sure didn't just start with this one and six. And then if you watch what we did in the off season as well, we, we allowed Mike McCagney and do to spend all that money in free agency, do the draft, hire Adam Gaze, and then we fired him. And then you watch him, watch us go forward the way we handled the Colicio Simile situation. Now we're losing as well. We're one and six. I think he's, you know, extremely upset. And I think he's tired of losing. And like I said, I don't think he asked for the trade, but once you're talking about trading him, and not just him, he's also watching you talk about trading Le'Veon Bell and Robbie Anderson, these two guys that we thought were. You know, maybe not Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson's a complimentary player, but definitely Le'Veon Bell's a building block, a guy that we're trying to move forward. I just, a- after all, I think he looked at the situation and was like, dude, if you're going to ship me, just ship me to Dallas because I don't want to deal with this anymore. I don't want to lose anymore. That's a- honestly what I think it is, and-, and that's how I think the situation is playing out. And I think he's just tired of it. Now, do, do again, do I agree with the way he's handling the situation? No. I don't, I don't agree with the way he's handling the situation. He can handle it a lot better. But that's what I think it all is coming from. He's just tired of it. He's tired of losing. He's tired of dealing with the situation here. And well, then you know what? Wants then, to go to while, he's or being tired and while he's being tired, to make a difference. Dude, it's not like he played mm-hmm. good at the Jaguars game. The Jaguars game, he makes two yeah. more plays. They actually win the game. Mm-hmm. Like, like I, I yeah. don't get it. Like, like, to me, it's like I don't care what the rumors were. I don't, I don't believe any of them. I think, I think they're all mm-hmm. lying. I think he's lying. I think his agent's lying. I think Gase is lying. I think Douglas is lying. I think they're all lying. I think they all have agendas, but and I why? think at some point he said, you know, I think at some point, you know what, he's like, you know what, I, I want to go to Dallas. I want out of here. And the Jets said, you know what, yeah. they probably made some kind of deal, and then they backed out, and the they, they Fletcher probably pissed him off. He probably thought he yeah, was but, out of here, and the Jets were negging the yeah. deal, and that's why he's still here, and he's pissed. Well, I guess what it is, dude, he wants it. out, and they probably told me to get him yeah, out of here, look, they didn't do it. Listen, I, I hear what you're saying, but to me, if he was lying, I don't understand why he would, why, why even tweet about it? Why say that you, weren't, you didn't request a trade on your own Twitter? And, and those tweets are still up. He, didn't, he never take them down. It only take like two seconds to delete tweets. He hasn't deleted either well, one he, of those. He, said, so he why, said he didn't request it, but when he found out about Dallas, he, he said he would go there. He, exactly. So, so, but he didn't request it. The initial report was he was trying to get out of here. Like he walked into the office, Joe Douglas, and said, trade me to Dallas right now. That is not. No, what nobody happened. said that. And so nobody's, it, nobody's saying that. They're saying no, there were, that there once he found that, that he once he found a out trade. Mm-hmm. No, there the were reports, reports are and once, he found out, once he found out that Dallas was involved, they said, "Would you go there?" He said, "Yes, I would take that trade." That's what he said. He said yeah, it I'm multiple done. times. Well, yeah, but there were also reports that he had requested a trade to get out of there. That that was there was reports flying around about that initially at that time, and that's why he came out and said those things that he never requested to leave this place. That's why those tweets were put out. So. If he, it, what, why do that when he could just have gone into the off season and either requested to trade in or tried to get moved in? It would be better on him to not say anything and just wait for the off season because again, we already talked about it during the show. The same guys outside of Robbie Anderson because he's going to be gone anyway. The same guys that are looking, they were looking to deal during this trade deadline, along with Le'Veon Bell too, are probably going to be the same guys that are going to try to move in the off season as well. They're going to try to move Le'Veon Bell again if they can. And hope you know they're looking to hopefully hopefully get some something back for him. They're going to try to move Adams again as well. So why not just wait until the off season and get moved in? Why come out and say anything? And I think again, I think it's because he initially wanted to stay here, but once he heard that he was being shopped and moved, he said, you know, hey, I, I, I want to go to Dallas. Just get me out of here. And again, I don't agree with the way he's handled business, and I understand that yeah, he did play badly against the Jags. He could have made some more plays, but he's not truly the reason why we're one and six. He's not. Because even coming nobody said he is, but he's not again. right now. He's not right now. The way he's handling himself is not part of the answer for the mm-hmm. Jets. Becoming a major distraction. You're right. You're right. You're and you know there, you know there's guys right. in the locker room looking at him like, dude, like, like how do like Le'Veon Bell's got to be laughing at him? Like, dude, Le'Veon mm-hmm. Bell has accomplished more in eight games in one year, eight games yeah. than Jamal Adams has accomplished his entire NFL career. And it's not even close. Like yeah. Le'Veon Bell is a yeah. superstar, and Ad- Jamal Adams is trying to be one. And Le'Veon Bell's like, yeah. patience, man. We got to work this out. Act like. And then behind the scenes, in, in silence, when nobody's talking about it, hey, man, get me out of here. Jamal Adams is embarrassing himself, and now he's embarrassing the team. And you know there's a part of the locker room looking at him like, dude, just shut up. I won't take a call from the coach, or I don't want to talk to my general manager. 
Like, dude, you're not above the team. As much as you want to be, you're yeah. not. Yeah. He's uh, and that, that, terribly. That's and it's like, and it's like, he's, and, alien, like he's alien the fans, dude. That, it just looks bad. Yeah, and and that's the part where I'm saying is that I I don't <laughs> that I don't agree with the way that you handle it. Is you handle it poorly? I just think that there's blames to be to be had on all sides. Truly, I, I do think that there is. They're all they're I all mean, the blame. You yeah, you can't really blame Joe Douglas for shopping him. But again, if he sat down with Joe Douglas, Joe Douglas said he wasn't going to shop him. Then you know, but even going forward, like I said, I, I think he's a guy that's going to be moved regardless. This coming off season, he's going to be gone. They're going to try to do their best to send him wherever they can get the highest, you know, value for him and move forward. You know what I'm saying? I just yeah, but again, see, you know, I just don't Jamal Adams would be the kind of ahead. guy though. But see, Jamal Adams would be the kind of guy that he's going to he, he could block a trade. But like, you know what? You want to trade me to say where Jacksonville? Guess what? I'm not going to resign there. You trade me there, I'm not signing your contract there. But you do what you want. He could play the game and ruin. He could ruin the Jets' ability to trade him. He could. Yeah, do. but I, I don't think. He, I don't think he would do. I don't think he would do that if you sent him to like a the contender hell he like wouldn't. Jacksonville. I, I don't, uh, dude. If you send uh, him dude, to Jacksonville, if he why would he want to go? He can he can navigate his way there. He he could uh, look if he wanted to go. If you send him to a contender, I I don't believe that he would block a trade if you send him to a contender or you send him to a team that's solid. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't think he would block a trade, but I could see him. You know. Name it any team. I don't, we we would probably never do it, but if we were sending him to the Dolphins, I could see him causing an issue. But even even then, honestly, if you get him, you can't. He can't really. He doesn't have any leverage because you have at least I think four years left of him because of the contract. Whatever team to get him can exercise uh, can handle his fifth year option. They can exercise the fifth year option, and I think they can franchise him two times as well. So he wouldn't have. Yeah, but then I mean, you, you, yeah, but you're you're giving up. You're going to give up all that draft competition, and not be guaranteed that he's going to resign. I mean, that's that's a risky for a team to I mean, do that. But I mean, we yeah, could, but you would. I least, mean, that's something we could talk uh, about down the line. But I mean, it's just yeah. At this point yeah. now, though, at this point now, going into the game on Sunday, it's a distraction mm-hmm. and it's an annoying thing. And if it if the Jets lose, I think this is going to blow up in his face. And the other thing too is mm-hmm. he better play his ass off. Like he better play one of his best games on Sunday, dude. Because if he plays like mm-hmm. trash. They're gonna be like now. Now, not only are you a problem in the media, you're not even playing well. So, I mean, he's it's, it's yeah, he's, interesting. He's I'm serious, it's a, dude. It's a he's tough. Putting the it's a tough right like, on a, like I now. said, he he did, and and I'm t- uh, that's why I keep saying I I I understand that like the situation and the story. I understand the story, but I think he's handled it extremely poorly. And I've said that a thousand times, and he's really put a spotlight on himself. Like you said, if he doesn't play well, not just this game, any damn game coming coming for him. Yep. Throughout the rest of the season, if he does not play well, there will be articles written immediately. There will be fans that are ready to bash him. They're already talking about booing him whenever, you know, he comes back home. Whenever there's a home game, they're going to boo him. There's fans that have already said that on all types of platforms. You know, there's, there's fans that can't stand him, that want him gone now, and calling him all types of stuff. So he definitely put a bullseye on his chest, and it's just it's a tough situation, man. So, Joe, we'll do our predictions for this game, this barn burner for game on Sunday. Uh, I'm going to say, oh, God, I don't even care. I'm going to say 30 to 14 Jets. Ooh, okay. Um, listen, I'm going to go 28-10 Jets. 28-10. Yeah, I think, I think we do just enough. I don't think we look like, you know, the Saints out there, but I think we do just enough and take care of business. I mean, that, honestly, yeah, I mean there's no reason they, they why suck. we should lose to the Dolphins. We should not lose to the Dolphins. We should not. There's, I, I don't give a damn. You know, any given Sunday, I get it. You don't win games on paper. I, I understand that. But there is no way that we should lose to the Dolphins. And if we do, man, no. let me tell you something. <laughs> Tuesday can get doozy. Yeah, you're not gonna like the Tuesday show. Let me tell you, because I'm gonna let off. If we lose to the Dolphins, I'm letting off. That might be the first time where you, you know, what I'm saying you hear some choice words fly out my mouth. You know, what I'm saying I might go, I might go full Tyson Roush. You know, what I'm saying so. Uh, <laughs> we should not lose to the Dolphins. We should not. All right, as we wrap things up, we want to thank the callers. We want to thank everybody that called in on Tuesday night. Too. Tuesday was one of our busiest shows we ever had. Um, Instagram and Twitter, at Talk Jets Radio, YouTube, Let's Talk Jets Radio. A shout-out to my boy Corey Anderson fighting Saturday night, Madison Square Garden against Johnny Walker. Uh, it's on ESPN2, probably around like 9.20, 9.30. Check that out. Big-time fight for him. Uh, he trains over here in uh, Brick, New Jersey. 
And, uh, Joe, it is your time to shine, man. we got Jets Dolphins, the toilet bowl on Sunday. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Listen, I am the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shame to promote our Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search Let's Talk Jets Radio. Like that page. Our content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message us. We'll message you right back. We love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave us some feedback. We love everything about what you folks think we do here on Let's Talk Jets Radio. I'm also on Twitter as well, at YoungJ000, at three zeros. Go ahead and follow me. I'll follow you right back. You want to troll me? No issues. I'm the troll that lives under the bridge, and I will have my Darnold jersey on as well. Hopefully, we can keep him clean in the upcoming game. I'm also on YouTube as well, at YoungJ00. That's two zeros on YouTube, three on Twitter. I do weekly videos about the Jets. I consistently talk about what's going on there. It's been a mess so far, but I'm sticking with it all the way throughout the year. I also talk about other teams as well. I have a weekly pickup, so go ahead, subscribe to my content on there as well. Message me on there as well, and I'll message you right back. You want to troll me on there as well. No issues. I'll troll you right back on there as well. And as always, folks, when you see me in person, okay, it is arms out. It is chest open. Jerry, it, come on. Show me the money! Hey, man, for you, the money is mandatory. For me, it's all about legacy. It's all about legacy with me. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. It's all about <laughs> legacy with me. You know what I'm saying? They tried to trade me, but I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? They tried to trade me, but I'm still here. Nothing, nothing's gone down. I'm still here after the deadline. So, listen, do not listen to the hater that is Roush. When you see me in person, his arms out, chest open, Free hugs for everyone, okay? It'll cost you folks absolutely nothing. I want to thank you folks for listening and calling in. Without you people, we are absolutely nothing. Again, everyone, breast cancer awareness, get involved any way that you can with the Essex County Sisters Network chapter. Do whatever you can. It's going to be across our social media. Any links that you like to donate, you can also go and donate your time as well. Uh, just get involved with the fight against breast cancer. Enjoy the game on Sunday. If they lose, it'll be an epic show on Tuesday. Talk to you guys then.